What we're going to look at now is if you're providing first aid, what else can you do or get others to do to help the situation? Also, if you're waiting for an ambulance, what could you do to help them when they arrive? To start with, give clear information over the phone. Make sure the emergency services have every bit of information they need so when they arrive, they're best prepared for exactly what's happened. Use bystanders to help you. There's always going to be people around any emergency scene. So ask them or tell them what to do. And they always want to help, but you often need to give guidance to people. Try clearing cars from around a property to allow better access to the emergency services when they arrive. Send people actually out to meet the ambulance when it comes. So if you're dealing with an emergency, try and send some bystanders up the road so that they can flag the ambulance down. Because often they'll come through and have a location, but they won't know exactly which house it is. Put pets away. What you don't want is the emergency service to arrive and then the dog or, uh, is starting to attack or barking. So put the dog away in the kitchen uh, or keep them safe, uh, put them in the garden, just to make it as safe as possible when the emergency services arrive. Leaving the front door open if it's a house, often it makes it easier that you can carry on dealing with the person, the emergency services can just come straight in. If it's night time, then leave all the lights on. This will make it much easier as they're coming down the road, maybe late at night, to see the house which is all lit up, opposed to a very dark house. If at night you could use the lights from your mobile phones to maybe flag down an ambulance. So if you just literally push the button on your phone, light it up, and you need to wave your arms to attract the attention of an ambulance, having that light on your mobile will help them find you. When the emergency services arrive, give them clear information on what's happened. Look at absolutely everything. Just hand over, don't just assume anything. Give them all the information that you found out. Make the scene safe and tell the emergency services of any dangers. It may be that you've been dealing with this person for a while and you've noticed something that could be dangerous. It could be a trip hazard, it could be chemicals or anything like that. Just make sure that they know when they arrive. If you've got a pathway leading to a house, maybe clear it because if you need to take the person out, then they need access for their trolleys or chairs. Again, it makes it safer for them and quicker. Put your car hazards on, even if it's outside your home. Again, this can direct them and make sure they can find out exactly where the, the person is. While you're waiting, try and find out what medication the person's on. This can be really good because you can hand over to the emergency services, maybe have the medications. Also, if they're going away in an ambulance, then the medications can go with them. Find out who their doctor is and ask maybe if they're under any hospital treatment. This information can again help the emergency services. If there's any next of kin details, one question the emergency services will write up glass when they arrive is, who are the next of kin. So if you can maybe find that out, then it also helps if you're talking to a patient who's unwell, it helps to build up a relationship so that they can trust you more. If you're at work, make sure that reception knows or any other relevant people that there has been an emergency because often an ambulance will arrive at reception on the business, yet you may be on a completely different part of the site. So it might waste time with reception trying to find where the accident has actually happened. Keep your mobile phone with you at all times. Often if there's a problem, the emergency services will call you back. And if you haven't got your phone with you, then they're not gonna be able to get hold of you. 